Hello, hello, this is Roberto and this is the HVAC Zima channel. Today we're going to be talking about DOAS systems, dedicated outdoor air system. All right, so let's get into it. So to begin with, we're going to put on the title in here. Let's put the title right here. Let's, I'm going to put it in green. So let's see, this is DOAS. There you go, DOAS. Okay, so DOAS is dedicated, okay, dedicated. There you go. Outdoor air, outdoor air, outdoor air system. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this video is because in the emails, in my personal email, they've been, they've been, uh, I've been getting requests about making a video about DOA systems. Okay. So the DOA systems are mainly more for commercial actually. Okay. So because it's not mainly for a residential, but sometimes, sometimes, you know, we have projects that are with multifamily buildings. So that would apply to residential, but this is mostly commercial. I'm going to put in here mostly, see dedicated outside there are mostly commercial. So if we talk about, if we refer to the commercial side, we need to bring up the standard ASHRAE. So this is ASHRAE. See, ASHRAE 62.2. Oh, I mean, 62.1 because it's for commercial. Okay. So mostly for commercial and this is ash rate 62.2 which pretty much is trying to comply so we try to comply so we're trying to comply with the ventilation requirements ventilation ventilation requirements okay ventilation requirements okay so ventilation requirements and this is a very much easy method to comply with these ventilation requirements because you know everyone notice like if there is a house and everything and if you don't have any ac system and you have untreated air you're gonna feel like the humidity or you're gonna feel like the places so there might be some mold issues or anything right so ventilation is actually very important for this case now what we're going to do is like so we're trying to comply that for example if we have in in here like in a building so i'm gonna put in here a building so i'm gonna make this in here a rectangle let's make like a rectangle so let's here a rectangle so if you have a building like this and then you're gonna have different areas in here in a building you're gonna have like um for example this and then this three stories four stories so let's put it like this three stories four stories and then um you're gonna have like um let's see here different rooms right so one room two rooms three rooms okay so for example this could be an office so if this is an office for example and if we do the heat load calculation not heat load calculation but we do the ventilation requirement for this place for example in an office we're going to need um say uh so let's put an office in here we're going to put a conference room conference conference room see conference room and then um, say we need, uh, we have some corridors all the way in here. We have corridors, for example, a corridor. And then usually in here we refer to as zones, right? So for example, we kind of zone one and then zone two. So different zones, zone two, uh, zone three, just for the sake of the example. So for these zones or different rooms, they are going to require different ventilation values. For example, in here we're gonna have for an office 30 CFM. See, uh, conference room. Let's see, 150 CFM. I need of ventilation, and corridor. Say, um, say 100 CFM, or depending depends on the on every building is different, right? So after we do our ventilation spreadsheet, and then we find that for from these for these zones for these spaces we need this kind of ventilation this amount of ventilation then after you do your spreadsheet on all the other spaces you end up getting for example 8000 so let's be crazy like 8000 cfm total so you're going to need this 8000 total of outside air we call it oa see oa outside air and also you need to exchange these so if you're bringing to the building outside air 
of course you need to exhaust that air the same way right so i could put so if you put in here for example 8000 air cfm aea exhaust air then you're going to have neutral so usually for buildings we don't try to make it neutral we try to make it a little bit positive air so that way you don't have to you know in case you don't you want to avoid infiltration negative pressure so in this case we're going to make it for example 85 percent uh this there is something what we call prelim preliminary design okay so i'm going to put in here i'm going to delete this okay so for pre preliminary design because in the beginning i forgot to talk about this but in a project there is the sd which is schematic design there is the dd design development and there's the cd construction uh documentation construction uh, everything so this is different phases of construction so i'm gonna put in here phases see phases of construction right Const oh, let's go back construction let's put in here construction construction where you are pretty much coordinating with the architect so whenever you are in sd level nothing is defined yet so you need preliminary design you need everything is preliminary so preliminary okay so whenever it's whenever it's design development then you try to make sure your equipment is correct and you do other calculations but for preliminary design what we're going to do is like with nothing is defined we have like for example 8000 cfm of outside air so we're going to make it, for example, 85% of that for exhaust air. So we're going to put in here 6,000, see for exhaust air, 6,000 and, and 400. Okay, it's 400 CFM. This is pretty much preliminary design exhaust air. And the reason for this is that I need selections. So wh while we're doing preliminary, preliminary design, we're doing, we need selection, selections for the DOA system, selections for the DOA system. So technically, the so after so for selections, see for selection, you need to select a DOA system for selections. You need to contact the representative. Contact, contact the representative. The representative could be, you know, I'm not sponsored by anyone, but I could mention like the representative could be trained. could be Aon, and then uh, could be uh, Green Heck. Green Heck, okay, could be Daikin, see Daikin, LG, and there's so many, right? So you're going to contact the representative you work with most, so that way, but he's going to ask you what, what are your selection requirements, like selection request. So what I usually do is I'm going to put in here a selection request. I'm, I'm sharing the way I do it, but everyone is different. Sometimes they just contact them and then, you know. So usually for this, I have an Excel sheet. I put a selection request. I have a selection request, Excel sheet. It's very easy and very not uh, very much, um, I would say, straightforward. But in the selection request, I, I put what are my outside air CFM and exhaust air CFM. And then I put like if I, if I need a heat pump or air, air uh, flow, fl air device, no, not air devices, f air flow monitoring devices. I put like, uh, you know, different requests. I, I could make a video about this later. So, okay. After that, see, once I have, so that's why I'm, I was doing this outside air and exhaust air. Okay. So I don't want to get sidetracked on that. Now, what we're going to show in here, this is, these are pretty much the basics of the DOA systems, okay? Now, wh what is it inside a DOA system? So I'm going to make another rectangle in here. Let's make a rectangle right here, a big one. So it's, no, we're going to put it in here in yellow, okay? So if it is in yellow, let's do this like big. It's, so it's going to be this big, all right? And then... Um, then usually these, you know, DOA systems are located on the rooftop. So this is, this represents the roof. Okay. So we're going to click on here and then let's see, let's see. There we go. So this is going to be the roof. This is the roof. And why do they put it on the roof? There is more space on the roof. Okay. So now in here, um, let's put this. This is a weather hood. 
there we go weather hood weather hood okay all right so what happens is outside air goes in by here so i'm gonna call outside air as in oa there we go oa okay now we also have exhaust air usually in some you know i'm gonna put like this in some uh some of the manufacturers put the outside no exhaust air on this side see on the side there we go so this outside air i'm gonna put in here not the outside air exhaust air so the, this is the exhaust air going outside right so that the, there you put the there the, the they put the outside air i mean exhaust air okay so see you have outside air exhaust air and don't forget that this outside air is untreated so i'm gonna put in here untreated it has humidity it has pollen it has everything untreated untreated okay there you go untreated all right and now what else is in this big box called DOA system? So usually, so nowadays, a lot of, uh, there is a lot of regulations on energy efficiency, okay? For example, in Washington DC, New York City, they are going more electric. They are getting rid of gas. So in that case, usually they require an outside air, air source heat pump and ERV. Okay, so and when we're talking about ERV, see, we have pre this ERV has an enthalpy wheel. Okay, let's we're gonna put in here an enthalpy wheel. Let's put this as yellow. Okay, 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 let's put this as yellow, like this. There we go. So I'm gonna call this as ERV. Okay, this is the ERV. ERV. Okay, but for the ERV, there are two options. One is a core, okay, one is a core, and the other one is a wheel, okay, wheel, enthalpy wheel. So a core is just like this, right? Like this. And then a wheel is like you can see in here in the video, see, a wheel. So in this case, we're choosing the wheel only for the, you know, just to show you guys. Now, so when, you, when you're doing an ERV in a box, you also are going to have two fans. So one fan, uh, let's put just one fan. And there are different configurations because every manufacturer is different, right? So we're going to put in here, this is the, we're going to put this is the exhaust fan. I'm going to put in here, exhaust fan, exhaust fan, right? And we're going to put in here, there's a supply fan, there you go. Not supply fan, but yeah, let's put a supply. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna be the supply fan. Let's put in here supply fan. Supply fan. Okay. Now, see, so the thing is, air is coming this way. So I'm gonna put in here like some something like um. So air is coming this way. See, it's coming this way, and it's gonna be supplied here, right? So the thing is, this air has to be treated. So if it has to be treated, so for example, if the, if this outside air is coming very, very hot, you need to get rid of the humidity. Dehumidification is very important. So, and what, what about if it's winter? If it's winter, it's coming into the building very, very cold. So if you wanna treat this weather, see this outside air, then you're gonna need coils. So I'm gonna be, so I'm gonna draw the coils in here. Let's put one coil in here. I'm gonna put as red. For example, if it's in winter, you're gonna, so if it's very, very cold, I'm gonna put in here a coil. Let's put a coil in here. So this is gonna be red. Why? Because I'm gonna call this as, oh, I'm, let's go here, go back, there you go. So I'm gonna call this as, let's put in here, preheat coil, okay, preheat coil and then for example in summer it's very, sometimes it gets very humid and then you don't want to you don't want to bring inside the building so much humidity right so if if you oh no no i'm gonna make this as blue because i'm gonna cool this so much so let's go here 
Let's go here. There we go. So what is that blue? That blue is another coil called, um, I'm going to call this, uh, what is it? I'm just changing the colors of my pen. So this is going to be called cooling coil. All right, there you go. So in this place is when you are treating the outside air and also this you have the ERV for energy efficiency because at the same time you are exchanging air in here. See, you are exchanging temperature, you are exchanging humidity level. So this is better control and it gives more efficiency to the DOA system. Okay, and of course you're gonna have filters, right? Pre-filters, but th that depends on the manufacturers, right? Like we're gonna put in here filters, right? You're gonna have filter, pre-filter, pre-filter, okay? So in other words, you're trying to put inside clean air. Now, this is also very important. What are you injecting? What are you supplying to the space? So you are supplying this, what we want, which is CA, okay? So in other words, let's put in here the difference. OA, what is it? OA is gonna be outside air. We need to comply with that outside air. But in terms of the DOAS, this is gonna be and treat it and treat it okay and now we're gonna have in here ca what is c air conditioned air conditioned air which means in this case this is gonna be treated air treated air right now there are different configurations okay i'm gonna make this a little bit clearer so this is the roof don't forget this is the roof okay this is the most um conventional and this is most popular example see this is the roof see this is on top right and usually you need to give this weight how much this weight on for the structural engineer okay so usually there are different configurations for doses for example um, one is gonna be like uh, when you dump this air directly to each zone. Another one is when you dump this conditioned air to the HVAC equipment. So to the inlet of the HVAC, HVAC equipment. And the third one is gonna be when you dump this air to the outlet of the HVAC equipment. And then the other one is going to be when you dump this air to the plenum. So there are the four different configurations, how you can distribute this outside air. OK, but that's going to be for the next video, because remember, this is the HVAC is my channel. We try to make things easier. OK, of course, DOAS has a lot of and deep uh, knowledge that we have to, to, to take into account. But this is these are mainly the basics. OK, in the next video, we're going to be talking about the air distribution configurations. All right. And also one of the advantages of this, um, I'm, I'm also we're going to be talking about the advantages of those systems, which are, for example, better humidity control, it's energy efficient and also enhanced filtration because also in the buildings more and more they are requiring lead at least get lead certified for lead and well this is a very good idea all right well i'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching hvac easy channel